Block continues its downward trend today after being on the receiving end of the latest report from short seller Hindenburg Research. The Cash App recalled the report factually inaccurate and misleading. That's a quote. It says it's considering legal action against Hindenburg. Mizuho senior financial technology analyst Dan Doloff joins us now. Dan, thank you for being here. Could you just outline, uh, outline some of the arguments um, uh, from the Hindenburg, Hindenburg report and uh, a lot of these concerns known by the analyst community? some valid points as, as you have uh, admitted in your latest note, but what are some of the details here? Hey, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, always a pleasure. Look, I think the main argument that uh, Hindenburg is making is that of the 50 something million monthly average users, a big proportion of them are, you know, uh, engaged in, uh, you know, uh, sex scandals, uh, you know, drug deals, et cetera, et cetera. And that puts a stain on pretty much all the Cash App users, which I would say the majority of them are ordinary people. So I think that's like the, you know, the one allegation that they're making that's getting people very, very scared is that this is used for illicit activity. Of course, there's always use for illicit activity for anything that has to do with money, but it doesn't mean that the majority of the Cash App users are actually doing that. And I think that's kind of the false or the, the, maybe the, the, a premature um, allegation that Hindenburg was making. And that's what's getting people really, really uh, agitated, that comment by them. And, and Dan, I mean, even within all of the allegations that have come forward and, of course, the response that we've heard from Block and whatever is next to come within that campaign, uh, you, you still have a buy on the stock. $93 is the target. Is there anything within this report that would change that for you? I think that if you go back to our research, and that's an excellent question, the you know we we downgraded uh, you know Square or Block a few months ago, and that was based on the cash app. What made us change our mind is actually the profitability, or the ability to achieve more than 1.3 billion dollars of profit, EBITDA profits this year. Uh, we think they could do as much as 1.7 or 1.8, and then next year and the years after, they could go back to you know. 2 billion, 2.5, 3 billion of EBITDA. And they're now focused, by the way, on excluding stock-based comp from their, uh, from their uh, math, right? So basically it's a very legit number. Uh, that was the impetus for our upgrade. So that does not change. Are there concerns about the cash app? We had those concerns. Most of them are actually, I would say the cash app is actually growing and, and most of our concerns are well known by the investment community. So there's really nothing new other than the fact that if you know we found out that most of these 50 million miles are actually used for drugs, which I th I find very very hard to believe, that would be the only thing that would be a problem. I think it's very unlikely that that's the case. And I'm just thinking about some of the competitors here. You have uh, Venmo, you have the Zelle app that's shared among some of the bigger banks. Are are there allegations that persist in the industry against some of these other apps that are similar to that which being leveled against the Cash App? Um, I would think if you're engaged in some of these activities, you have a host of options here. And just wondering if they're uh, leveling the accusations evenly. Yeah, they're not. And I think you're you're spot on with this one, right? So again, I'm not. I think they've singled out the Cash App, and there's a lot of like you know. I think undertones in, in that Hindenburg report, which I didn't like, and I, th I thought were inappropriate as well. Um, I, you know, in terms of like the, the certain certain demographic or certain income level of people that use that, uh, I'm sure that you know, you know, because millions of people use Venmo and millions of people use Zelle as well, I'm sure there's you know things going on in in you know in in every P2P or payments app. But the report chose to go after Square after the Cash App, which I think was was inappropriate. It, I'm sure. It's, to a certain extent, these things, you know, happen everywhere. And um, I don't know to which extent, but I'm sure. Actually, I want to make one interesting comment. They mm -hmm. said yesterday in the report that of the accounts, the compliance department of Square or Block, of the accounts that they uh, said were fraudulent, like 47 or something percent were actually found to be fraudulent. I think it's not. It actually means the compliance department is doing a great job. They're finding the accounts that they think are fraudulent and they have a pretty good hit rate. So I don't understand why people are so agitated. They're doing, a, I, I would have expected to see a statistic that says of the accounts that we said were fraudulent, 100% were actually fraudulent. That would be amazing. So they should even do better 
in terms of singling out those accounts. So I don't think this is actually a valid argument. I actually don't think it holds much water. And last thing I want to say is gross profit is 100% kosher. They're not accused of fudging numbers or anything like that. So the numbers speak for themselves. The cash app gross profit accelerated quarter over quarter. And that's the most important thing to keep in mind. The numbers themselves are kosher. The mouths are honestly not as big of a metric we use on, you know, in the investment communities as this report made them look like. It's not something we talk about. We talk about gross profit, not the mouse. So it also comes back to the amount of real people then that you're banking or at least kind of formulating your expectations for how much they're earning per average user, as they put forward, but per individual person is, is what this research is kind of calling out that the, the numbers aren't actually representative of individual people, but instead could be representative simply of an email address or a unique identifier instead. Does, does that change the calculus of, of how to even cover or how to even evaluate the financials here? It, it does, but let's say, let's make, let's make believe that there's fewer real people, right? Mm -hmm. All that means is that the real people are doing more per person. So it's just actually, it, it almost, it almost, it's almost like a good thing, right? So the engagement of the real people, so you're dividing your denominator. If your denominator is smaller, then the revenue per person is bigger. Uh -huh. So the average, all it means is that the average cash app user, legit cash app user, that's not a fake account, hypothetically, is actually doing more with the cash app. I think that's a good thing, not a bad thing. So we're talking here about just like, you know, math and perception more than actual numbers. That's why I said before, the gross profit, sure, right, is kosher. The number itself is kosher. It's the real number. They're not inventing the number. And so that's why I think a lot of these things were a little, uh, I think a lot of the accusations there were a little bit wishy-washy. And um, and they, they also put a stain on, on, a, on a big part of the population, which I think was inappropriate. Just lastly, while we have you here, there seems to be more of a, a crypto crackdown among regulators that is starting to formulate even more. Uh, you've been strongly worried ab about Bitcoin in the past, but as it relates to a company that we're discussing right now in Block and, and the subsidiary of Cash App, you know, where do they need to perhaps change or get ahead of regulation that may be coming forward in crypto? I, I personally, I'm a, I'm a huge crypto bear. I mean, it's it's very open. I know we have a, a, an underperform on Coinbase for that reason. And and, and the downgrade on Square, uh, which we did last year, was you know we said that that management is over enthused or over focused on on Bitcoin. I think the right thing to do, honestly, personally, would be the the Bitcoin revenue on the Cash App is a very small part of the overall Cash App. It's it's single digit percent in terms of the the revenue it generates. I think they need to disassociate Bitcoin from the Cash App. A, it would make it more legit because we know, we all know what Bitcoin is used for. The use cases for Bitcoin are exactly the use cases that you know people are worried about. And so disassociating the value that Cash App provides from Bitcoin, I think would do good for Cash App, not bad for Cash App. So I think that's maybe the one change that would be good for the company. Interesting. Mizuho, Senior Financial Technology Analyst, Dan Dolev. Dan, always a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks.